Okay guys, so in this, the final of my videos on Webpack caching, I'm going to try to explain to you <coughs> how to solve this issue where the hash for our Wender file keeps on changing even though we don't want it to because we only want the Wender file to change when we actually make a dependency update. We don't want it to change when we change our own code. Uh, that defeats the whole purpose of having a big file that holds all of our dependencies, right? So in my last video we saw that anytime I changed my own file, this bass file here, we saw that it kept on updating this vendor file and basically this is a configuration that I'm going to show you that is slightly better that solves this problem fairly in a fairly nice way. So let's get down to it. So in this file this is uh, a, another iteration of this better file. As you can see this is the file we saw in the last video where we extract all of our dependency that our node modules into, a, into the vendor chunk, right? But we still have this issue I was talking about earlier, right? So you remember that I was talking to you about the runtime and that internally what Webpack is doing is that in every entry point file, in other words for all of these files that we're using, Webpack would, uh, will actually generate runtime logic that it uses itself in order to load the different dependencies and the different chunks to the user's browser, right? And that is a little bit of a, a problem because that is actually the core reason that in, in t these internals are actually the core reason why this has, has is changing all the time. And I'm going to explain to you why that is, or rather the basics of why that is. So and also, you know, of course, how to solve it. So something that you don't, uh, like the first thing we need to kind of figure out is, okay, how can we extract the runtime out of our dependencies and put that as a separate dependency, like as a separate file? Because in theory, if we could just make sure that the stuff that Webpack is adding to our code in order to do its job always was like an external thing or as like always never changed, then, you know, in theory, if our code hasn't changed and Webpack's code hasn't changed, you know, the hash should be the same. So I'll show you how this works. And this is a little bit unintuitive. So as you can see here, we have the common shocks, shunks plugin. And this is what we talked about last time that you have a Wender file and you extract all the stuff that is resolved in, is found inside of the node modules and put you're putting that in another chunk in, in a separate file called Vendor. So far, you're with me, right? But now you can see that the co there's another common chunks plugin here as well, which I call runtime. And I've set the minimum chunks to infinity for some reason. Why is that? Well, so the, uh, so the thing is that Webpack, as of Webpack 2 or 3, I think they added support for this, uh, actually has support for you to extract these runtime internal this basically the runtime code that webpack uses in order to get all the dependencies into a separate chunk and this is the way you do it and the way it works uh, order is very important here guys so you need to extract your own stuff first and put this as the last thing that you're extracting from you know if, if, if when webpack is is running so just as a rule of thumb put this as the last thing and name it something that is not inside of the entry. That's the way it's going to work. If you check the documentation, you, you can verify this. And then I'm saying that the minimum chunks, in other words, like how many occurrences does do I need to find, is I've set that to infinity, which basically means extra, like extract everything you can find the, into this runtime bundle. So if I now run, let's see here, let's build everything. Do, 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 do. We are running everything so wasteful, but still, it's much easier for me to do this than run separate commands. All right, let's go to the page and let's refresh it. So, as we can see now, that now we actually have three files we have the runtime file, the vendor file, and our own code. And this is actually what we want. If we go and have a look at the stats, we'll see that these three files 
are generated. So here we have our dependencies as we saw before, like our libraries that we are depending on. And then you have the runtime, which is, well, there's a s slight issue with that. It's not supposed to be zero bytes, but this is the runtime file and this is our own code. So, so far so good, right? So now what's happening is that all the things that is required for Webpack to load these files is found inside of this file. And here's our, you know, this is our code and this is the vendors. And what's beautiful about this is if I now go and I change something about this code, let's say I extract that and I build everything again. Building, building, building. And there we are. So C37 is the vendor sh sh hash now. I change it, C37, voila. You may have noticed that the runtime has changed and that our code, like the hash of this code changed. And that's okay, that's exactly what we're expecting because the runtime has, you know, because the the hash, like basically the content of this file has changed, therefore the runtime may, may it's not always that the case, but it may also change. So we're gonna have to kind of live with that the runtime's hash is being updated, but that's, you know, considering that it's, these two files are very, very small and considering how large our vendor sh chunk is, you know, it's magnitudes much, like magnitudes larger. This is a win. This is exactly what we want. So we're done now, right? I've taught you everything you need to know, right? Well, unfortunately, no. And in order for this to make any sense, I have to get a little bit technical with you. But hey, this is a technical, technical topic. So I'll show you with examples. Yes. Let's import foo. So now I have added a dependency another dependency which is you know this is just me importing this file into that file that's it it's my own code I have changed absolutely nothing let's run the bill or rather I haven't changed my dependencies to the vendor bundle because remember these two are dependencies that are in like the node modules so they're gonna be extracted into the node modules but this is just a local file like that I have in my own project and I'm just requiring it in here so that I can you know run that script with this stuff right that's all I'm doing so look at this hash now boom changed but we know for a fact that like this is uh, it's, it's the same size of the file like what happened like the the file is in here, like the code that is running in, is inside of this chunk. So why did this hash change? Well, for this to make any sense, you have to. Uh, I'll have to. I, I will have to explain to you how Webpack resolves things internally. So the way that Webpack works is that it is going to go through all of the dependencies in your product. In other words, all of the requires that you have, like all these modules, are going to get a module ID. And that ID is by default created by occurrence. That means that if you change, if you know, if you start requiring, if you like, if you just keep the file as is and you change the code without requiring something different, like something else, then everything stays the same because the module's dependency graph has not, it, it hasn't changed. But if you change the module's dependency graph, all these numbers are going to have to be regenerated or rather they will be, not, they, they may regenerate in, depending on occurrence. So that means that if this was ID one and then ID two, this now is ID one and this is ID two and this is ID three. So now, you know, you have to update, you know, then the hashes need to like the modules has to have to be updated, so that's a like a basic explanation as to like as to what's happening now to the more important question: How do we solve this? Like, because you don't want to be in a situation where you can't change imports because if you change an import, your you know your hash is going to change on your vendor file again. So let's go to the final configuration. I promise this is the final one. And this is the one we want to look at. Okay, this is almost identical with one, one single difference. This thing here. Hash module ID plugin. This is, 
the only difference from the previous configuration. So what this does is that it will use the path of the, the relative path of the module that you are importing and hash uh, create instead of having a occurrence a numeric module ID that is based on the like the occurrence or like the the interval I call it yeah yes just call it occurrence the occurrence of the modules that you have de declared as required modules it will actually name them all it will actually look at the path give it a string name instead of a number and that will always be the same so, or well for the most part and almost always be the same so if I now build this, this again doo -doo 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 -doo. here we are building 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 more buildings and we go to the final page vendor best here we are we're refreshing a little bit as we can see now though, so it's 501 and I add back my little dependency here build it again spending half these videos in just building time, sorry about that here we are so, and it says 501 there and it's still 501 because now with the hashed modules plugin we are no longer declaring our module IDs right we don't have to regenerate a new ID for our chunks every time we change the order of our imports it is just based on the relative path to to the module so that's me that's fancy talk for saying if you do have this configuration when you're creating your webpack bundle everything is going to work pretty nicely there are situations when this will still not work because trust me there is like the, you, you can if you start loading like modules asynchronously and like even fancier stuff like that this will not work either but i think that this is a natural stopping point because this will cover like 80% of your use cases and hopefully I have taught you enough about webpack caching to kind of understand the intricacies of this and how extremely powerful this tool is and how complicated it can actually get and honest to god like I, I'm gonna be honest with you I'm not a, a master of webpacking anyway the reason why I'm making these videos is because I had to go through this journey at my career at my company I was setting all of this up and I'm just relaying what I learned while I was doing this to you guys hopefully this has been useful to you and thank you so much for watching